All right, well, if you've been having trouble securing funding for a pre-construction home or condo, you are not alone. Rising rates and price valuations have made it kind of difficult with very limited options when it comes to finding loans or financing. Well, joining us live again this morning is Leah Zlatkin, the expert at lowestrates.ca and also a licensed mortgage broker. Leah, appreciate you joining us here because, you know, pre-construction, a lot of people think, okay, if I buy now, I'm going to have this great place in a few years' time, get, get ready to close on it. But there are some serious pitfalls right now, aren't there? There are, and it's always been a great idea in the past to buy pre-construction. It's got a lot of benefits to it. The challenge is if you bought in sort of that 21, 22 area mm -hmm. and are closing now. So property valuations haven't changed that much. Back in those days, an average condo was selling for about 710,000 mm -hmm. versus today where they're selling for about 702,000. So that's according to TREB data. We're looking at you know Q4 of 21 versus Q4 of 23. Okay. Um, but we have seen that the market shifted quite substantially substantially in terms of the number of days listed so it went from 18 to 30 mm -hmm. so that's a pretty that's long big, yeah. a pretty long delay compared to you know the actual number of sales so we saw 7800 sales in 21 versus approximately 3400 sales in 23 mm. that's down substantially yeah. So if you are closing right now, sometimes those properties are not appraising properly. What that means is what you paid for the property may not be what it's worth today. So what happens if that's the case? Because you're thinking, okay, I've got my down payment, mm -hmm. I'm in, and then suddenly the bank says, hold on, what happens? So in those cases, you actually have to come up with a difference. So if the bank has told you that the property is worth less than it's actually that you paid for it, mm -hmm. you need to come up with a difference. So the bank will still give you a mortgage, absolutely, mm -hmm. but there's usually a shortfall. So you have to find that money. And for many people who don't have a family member or don't have savings, mm -hmm. it can be really hard trying to figure out where to come up with those funds. So Leah, if you can't come up with the funds, then what happens next? Do you lose the property, lose your down payment, that kind of thing? Unfortunately, you need to come up with the funds in some manner, and if you cannot come up with the funds, then in that case, in most cases, you're looking to see if you can assign the condo. Mm. Sometimes people have it built right into their contract that they can assign the condo to somebody else, but if you don't have that in your contract, you're kind of put between a rock and a hard place. Wow, okay, so that's pretty difficult. Can you get a little more into the assigning side of things? Because I know some places it says right there on the sort of, you know, on the sticker, like, you, you know, you can assign. But if you see ones that you can't assign, should that be a warning or is that just a different kind of structure? Most condos or most pre-construction properties are not assignable. So mm. it will say right in your contract, you cannot assign this property. Yeah. This being said, a lot of people, you know, their realtors will negotiate on their behalf and they will get them an assignment clause mm -hmm. where they're allowed to assign the property. That's a great fallback option. If you don't have cash set aside, you're kind of in a bad or precarious situation if you don't have that kind of clause built right in. Let's say you own an existing property and you're in this situation where you're potentially buying, let's say, a second property pre-construction. Could you take some money out of the value of your existing house to try to make up the shortfall? I'm trying to think of what strategies people might yeah, use. Yeah, absolutely. You could definitely take equity out of your primary residence to try mm -hmm. and buy the new place. For many people, the challenge might be that they were planning on selling their original property and they were banking on all of that mm -hmm. money for the rest of their down payment or whatnot. Right. So there have been challenging situations for some of our clients, um, in most cases, gifted equity equity, so gifts from family, friends, etc. Yeah. Sorry, not friends, family. Um, <laughs> Maybe you've got friends that'll give you money. <laughs> well, they're not going to probably qualify for yeah. the mortgage unless they're gifting you all the money right. for the property. Right. Um, but for the most part, getting that money actually gifted from family members mm -hmm. is really important or having that money saved already. Is there something you can do ahead of time to kind of try to protect yourself beyond like working on an assignment clause type thing? Ahead of time, you have to make sure that the property you're, you're buying is actually worth what you believe it to be worth. Mm -hmm. So if you're making a smart investment and you're buying a property that you believe will appreciate over time, then you should be okay. The challenge is that people bought in the peak of the market mm -hmm. and now we're in a bit of a trough. I'm not saying the market's not going up because I do think it will, but if you happen to be closing while we're in this trough, that's where you have a risk. Kind of caught there. Okay, Leah Lacton from lowestrates.ca. I appreciate you highlighting this this morning. Thanks for being here. Good to chat Thank with you. Thank you so much for having okay, me. Okay, take care.